We've got three down with one to go, folks. With the brisk breezes, horrendous hurricanes, and massive monsoons behind us, a little dry heat ain't gonna do us in, right? This last season is very likely the easiest to swallow and thus survive, so there's really nothing to worry about. Oh yeah, this is gonna be an issue now, isn't it? First things first, however. The floods ain't just gonna vanish as soon as seasons change. So remain aware of your wetness conditions, but our temperature levels are what require our attention immediately. So let's get to it. By now, you should be looking rather snazzy with a umbrella atop your noggin, and that's just fantastic. Cause now, all you need are the materials for endo fires on the go, or endo fire pits that you can always just return to if needed. Cause for the most part, a umbrella and an on the fly endo fire is all you need to combat the heat. But Beard, what about thermal stones? Can't you cool them down just as you heat them up? abso frickin lootly friends. And if this was any other Don't Starve experience, I'd be telling you otherwise. But in short, thermals are completely broken and shipwrecked. Fuss with them if you want, but I say screw them. Instead, we can choose to invest in other protective gear like the floral shirt. In Shipwrecked, this craft is far, far easier to work towards as it only uses regular battles for Pete's sake. Whatever the case, the choice is yours. Just as long as you utilize some combination of overheating protection on your person and then just an outside cooling mechanic of sorts. It's honestly really easy to fight the heat in Shipwrecked. And if it's too much, just pop in the Reign of Giants or Hamlet for a while. But really, dry season is not that bad. And you know why? Because apart from some raining hellfire that's coming soon, there is no smoldering mechanic at play. Which means no chance for wildfires. It will still get hot enough to the point of drying out and withering your plants, but we can fix that. So you decide. Either rely on your hopeful surplus of resources gained throughout the previous two seasons and only re-fertilize what needs to become the very end of dry season, or just battle it out whenever you can. They're not gone forever. They just need a little bit of extra love in order to return to ya. However, if you can manage a fling or two, it is best you place them to cover it all, as they will help maintain a set of healthy, unwithered plants as much as possible without the need for you to refertilize them all yourself, be it after the season or even during it. So you don't need them for fires, but you still might kinda need them. Just a quick additional note on withering things in this season though, limpet rocks will also suffer similar fates, so bye bye easy food, filler, or heck, even good efficient creations like bisque that uses limpets, so be mindful folks. However, the real threat of dry season lies within the volcano, and after three warnings following the now dissipated floods, everything within the volcano is being hurled right at you. Eruptions last for 30 seconds and send dragoon eggs raining down from above, dealing 300 damage to what's been hit, setting surroundings on fire, potentially leaving eggs intact or some volatile lava pools dotted about, and just being a nuisance overall. And it might not be any better on the water, cause even though they'll just crash into the depths, they'll still send long large waves every which way to Sunday, so really, nowhere is safe. Do not get hit by these eggs. But about these eggs that have remained intact, you can mine them as to prevent any dragoons from hatching on whatever island you happen to have crashed them on. But sadly, you kinda get bugger all for it. But you will be safe. However, the lava pools are a different story. Drop a chunk of ice in one to walk away with a valuable piece of red hot obsidian. Very nice, very, very useful, and not a bad exchange at all. Let's not be fools though. Eruptions are incredibly dangerous and can easily be world ending events in an instant. Choose a faraway island to endure the hellfire as to prevent a base time catastrophe and find this mountain of fire for Pete's sake. 
we are going to discuss how to completely nullify this halfway sentient pile of molten rock. So enter the Altar of Snackrifice. It's not only a wonderful visual representation of the current state of any up and coming big boom, but it is our ticket to non-existent eruptions. And it's pretty simple. There are sacrifices that appease the Lady of the Mountain, and some that annoy the absolute crap out of her. And for every 16 points of appeasement, you delay an eruption for two full days. And for every negative 16 points of wrath you instill in her, you move the volcano two days closer to a fiery boom of death. What's accepted or not can be seen right here. So learn to keep up the sacrifices to avoid dealing with anything we've been mentioning. Due to all this, some may even establish temporary bases within the volcano biome itself, just as they do in the caves during summer in Reign of Giants, perhaps. You honestly don't need much, as it really should be as temporary as possible. But if you do choose to stay where the hot stuff is, you better be paying attention to the lady, as if you ignore her, she'll make you pay for it. You don't just instantly die come an eruption while atop the volcano, but Dragoon Ace will still come crashing down, ruining everything. But you'll also begin to heat up so freaking fast that nothing, nothing at all will be able to combat it. If you're not dead from falling dragon eggs, you'll soon be melted in a minute regardless. But what is something good in dry season that isn't out for our life? Well, depending on who you ask, of course, there's always coffee. Coffee plants are actually available all year round, but it isn't until dry season will they require no fertilization to gather initially. You should certainly work towards relocating some as soon as possible, but know that they can only be planted on volcanic or magma turfs, as well as only being fertilized through the use of ash and ash alone. Manage, however, and you kinda have just broken the game in a way. For you see, we can place four roasted coffee beans within our crock pots in order to whip up a nice cup of hot joe on a burning dry season morning in order to benefit from an 83% increase to our overall movement speed. And that is perfect for easy kiting, quick navigation and thus mapping, or just running away if you need to. Speed is key to almost everything in Don't Starve. And oh yeah, these effects do translate the boat speed as well, and yes, other speed boosts can and will stack with coffee. So, go speed racer go. Elephant cacti are another set of volcanic plant life most active in dry season. They have a ranged defensive mechanism that deals 20 damage, but they also prick you following each hit taken. Once dead though, you'll have access to digging up their stumps for relocation later but you'll also receive a cactus spike for your trouble. The spikes are technically a weapon, although they're completely worthless. So instead, use three of them to construct a set of cactus armor in order to negate the cacti's ranged attack while wearing it, of course. And that is very nice, because similar to coffee plants, elephant cactus plants can only be planted on magma or volcanic turfs, but can be arranged to make certain farms and combat scenarios a bit easier for you. For example, use them properly, and the ever-strengthening crocodile waves will be pricked to shreds if they run through your contraptions. We've talked more in depth about all this stuff in our volcano specific guide, so if I were you, I would head there. But speaking of crocodogs, we now have a yellow variants, and as if we didn't have enough to deal with already, these ones poison you with each bite. So have poison resistant gear like the seashell suit or horn helmet at the ready if you need to go mano y mano with these things. But a couple things before we wrap. You'll notice a significant lack of wave activity on the water during dry season, be it in the medium or deep oceans. So if you have things that need to get done on the water, this is actually the season to do it in. And finally, trawl netting returns in dry season, but triumphantly returns. Dry season offers the best trawl net loop pool overall. 
as you can sail away with the best on the water weapon in the game, a nice chunk or two of sought after obsidian, or even a set of rare gems or gold. This, this is the time to troll net. But there you have it everyone, not just our final seasonal guide, but the end of the seasonal series. Mile season is where this all began with us setting sail and conquering the sea. Hurricane season came and went as we negated the elemental impact of the world and put an end to some spinning seal as soon as he arrived. Monsoon season thought it could show up and drown us all, but cunning plans and a whole lot of bag sand put an end to that one. And now, dry season. A hot and dangerous time of year has been nothing short of a chill experience achieved through snackrificial giving. But well done folks, well done. I hope these guides have helped. Continue to ask whatever questions you've got down below. Good luck to ya, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye!